Hey, Tina. You played any uh, cool indie games recently? Indeed! Dan. Yes? What would your definition of an indie game be? Uh, You've been on the show for two years. What, how would you define one? Something by a, a smaller or newer studio that doesn't involve pre-existing IP. Okay, Rob, is he right? Um, a lot of those things you said are absolutely true. Typically, when I think of indie, I think of small studios, not backed by giant publishers like EA or Activision and things like that. Chances with newer IP, sometimes chances with established IP. A single or a few guys on the team. Low, low capital. Low capital. Yeah. All right. So, what are we talking about today? So, we've talked about indie games in the past. Yes. But uh, I want to talk about uh, five indie games that are brand, brand newer, okay. and uh, one or two that are coming out that you should definitely take a look at. Why is there a switch on the table? Um, I also want to talk about some of the indie games that we have talked about in the past that you may have missed that are now available for people like Dan who have a switch, or Hello. people like Omar who have a switch and not a PC, Got or it. Tita. Uh, uh, oh. Mm. No, I don't have a switch. Mm. Well, All right. it can be fixed. Number one, what's your first game? So the first game I want to talk about is Celeste. Have you ever heard of a game called Towerfall? No. Yes. Towerfall. Towerfall. Yes, vaguely. Towerfall is a, we've talked about local multiplayer games before. Mm -hmm. Towerfall is one screen, dudes have arrows and they shoot each other and one hit and they die. You can catch arrows, there's environments, things. It's some of the best multiplayer action that you can get. It's been available on PC for, since about like 2014, I think. From the makers of Towerfall, is this game called Celeste. It is very 8-bit pixel-y, pixel art, and it stars a female protagonist, and she has the ability to do dashes and airs and jumps and platforming. And there's is a, it a side-scroller? Side-scroller, yes. And she, and her, the mission is to climb up a mountain. And so as you're climbing up the mountain, there's also characters that you meet, and they talk about, like, you know, hey, you should probably not do this. It's kind of scary. So there's a bit of a story of climbing up this mountain, and it's a really difficult platforming game but it's one of those games where even though it's difficult once you get past things and learn the mechanics of air dashing and going through tunnels and going through things that switch the environment it's really satisfying and you can die a hundred million times through a whole level but as soon as you die you start really quickly back again so you get to try it again and try it again and try it again and it's fantastic and it's came out a couple of maybe a month or so ago maybe a little bit longer than a month ago what's it available on that it one? is available on PC and switch and I think the PlayStation, I'm not sure about that, but definitely PC and definitely Switch. So, definitely if you like platforming games, which unfortunately I love platforming games, but there's <laughs> not that many people that want to buy them. Celeste is one to go for. No physical copy, just uh, digital right now. There right. is not a physical copy of Celeste. A lot of yet. indie yeah. games don't go to... Well, there's a couple yeah. of small little companies that make physical copies of these games, mm -hmm. like limited run games or well, yeah, the ones yeah. in England. I cannot remember what they are. You would know. All right, what is game two? Game number two. Uh, Segue into what you were talking about. Dead Cells. Have you heard of Dead Cells? Yes. Mm -hmm. I have. No, I you have. You have. So Dead Cells, and it's actually kind of cool. I got to see this game like in action way, way, way before it was finished. Uh, You're no, such a hipster. True. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Cut that out. Cut the hipster comment out. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> that had already. Yeah, yeah. That's true, that's true. That's right. All right, go ahead. So this game is really cool. It's a very Metroidvania type game. And when I say Metroidvania, I mean like in the same vein as Super it. Metroid and Symphony Simon of the Night. Got it, got where, it. Where, Samus had sex. Got it. No, that's not at all how it is. <laughs> awesome. Where you cannot go through something until you go back. You get to a certain point, you get an item, and then things that you couldn't do before, you can now suddenly go it through doors. Okay. And so things get bigger. That's typically what the Metroid Vanny is. This art style is, rather than 8-bit-ish, it's more 16-bit-ish, side-scrolling. And yes, it is a platform. That, like I said, there's a lot more adventure and exploring to it. Beautiful animation, and you're like this dead cell. Thing, but you're like a knight dude and you go and chop things up and gather spirits and things like that. It's also very slick, very cool. It does in fact have a physical release by the company that I'm not coming up with the name. Anyway, I'll, I'll put it right here when I know what the name is. But it's not like Limited Run or anything, but okay. it is also available on PC, PlayStation 4, and Switch. So if you are in looking for a Symphony of the Night and Super Metroid-esque type game, Dead Cells is definitely the way to okay. go. All right, the next game I'd like to talk about <laughs> <laughs> is Hollow Knight. Have that we, game is cool. I've we, yeah, I've, I've watched a lot of people play it on Twitch. I haven't played it myself because I'm not into games like that, but it seems 
really interesting, kind of like how you described Celeste. Like, you start really quickly once you die. Mm -hmm. I like it. Side He's, scroller. Have you played it? Mm -hmm. Like, I did the boss battle things with my brother. My brother was playing it, and mm -hmm. I wanted to try it out. That's a very Metroidvania game. It also is very Metroidvania, and it's like you're a little shadow dude, and you fight these big bugs. And these little ghosts. Yeah. Guy. And the art style is it's really, really cool. good. It's like yeah. black and white ish and shadows and things like that. And it's been available on PC and PlayStation for a, for a while. while now. I, I played on the Switch. Yeah, but it is now very recently available on the Nintendo Switch. And it, I will say that a game of that magnitude, I'm surprised that they didn't charge you more than what they do, <laughs> because <laughs> it's like it's only 15 bucks, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, it's, it's very they, expensive. They, they could easily charge you like 40 bucks for that game. And that's another thing, some of these games that I'm talking about, like there's like Celeste is pretty short in that like you could finish it if you were an expert in a couple of hours. Mm -hmm. But it's just, just so much content in some of these other games. Like it's like, are they really like the amount of time, it's not the amount how much something costs, it's the amount of time that people want to devote into games. And a lot of these indie games for not a lot of money take a lot of your time, which is probably pretty cool. We've talked about Stardew Valley. That's mm -hmm. super guilty of doing that. Mm -hmm. So the fourth game I like to talk about is Ukulele. Have y'all heard of Ukulele? No. I know what one is. Tiny Tim. <laughs> right? You... My wife plays one. Not a Ukulele. Ukulele is in the same vein of Donkey Kong 64, where it's a... That's an odd comparison. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, right. no, no. Explain. Okay, go on. So the game is by... The company is called Playtronic. And it's for a lot of the same previous developers of those rare... Donkey Kong, Conqueror, Rare, that's why you went Banjo, that way. Banjo Kazooie, gotcha. those type games. They wanted to make a 64 esque type game. Really? Interesting. Uh, with those, like, the graphics are a little bit better, but like 3D, put eyes on anything, and all of a sudden it's a character, collect everything you find type game. Because admittedly, we played a lot of those on the Nintendo 64. Mm -hmm. So wow, bananas are a lot different than coins. Exactly, completely different. And K-O-N-G, like, you know, that's completely <laughs> unique. You do anything with letters, right? So Ukulele has been available on PC for about a year and stuff, but it is now released on more platforms, including the Nintendo Switch. Have you, I haven't heard you mention Xbox One at all. Is it, people still make games for that? People absolutely make games for the Xbox. And a lot of these indie games, there isn't any indie platform for the Xbox, but a lot of these things- The players don't tend to lend themselves to Xbox. They used to. They used to. The faces that you two are making are like <laughs> with disgust. <laughs> Why would I play a indie game on an Xbox One? No, no, there's there's plenty of indie games on well, the I Xbox. But I figure because they're on the PC, why not just throw them on the Xbox One? I mean, it's same. Developmentally speaking, yes. Like if they're using something like Unity or Unreal or Construct or Game Maker Studio, absolutely. It is just a matter of saying export to. But then it also there's things that you have to be specific about resources and how buttons look like and make sure there's not bugs. So it can be a bit more of a challenge to release on many more platforms, especially when you're in the studio and there's only like five of you. And like, do you con contract out your testing or what have you? So go for the one that most people have. And there's at least 60 million PlayStation 4s out there and Switch is selling like gangbusters. What's the last game? Last game, last game is the one I'm most excited about. It is called The Messenger. Have I talked about this game with you guys? Yeah. Okay. So The Messenger. You haven't played it yet. Incorrect. I have actually played Whoa, the Messenger. Whoa, wait, wait, wait. You played a game? I played a game. It's so funny. Like, when do we don't have time to play games with all these children and things? Like, so The Messenger, I'm really stoked about this. I saw this game last PAX South and it was two guys and they were super pumped about it and I'm talking to them and they're like, yeah, this is back when we were playing Ninja Gaiden. And I think I've talked about how my brother and I played the snot out of Ninja Gaiden back in the day. Mm -hmm. And so this is definitely a homage to that. It starts out very 8-bit-esque, side scrolling ninja game, like what you would expect and you learn special abilities as you go forward. But what makes it really cool is as you get through the game, there's a certain point where things occur and all of a sudden the game switches to 16-bit style. So then your character looks cool with 16 bit, the music is upgraded. But then as you're playing through, there's times where you have to go back in time to do certain puzzles. And when they do, it transitions to this 8 bit, 8 bit music thing or whatever that you're doing. So there's that mechanic going on. And then, at risk of saying spoilers, as you get a little bit farther in the game, it opens up from a straight up platformer to a Metroidvania type of thing game. So all these things that you saw in the beginning, like how do I get through this, you can go back and do more things. So, so like map two guys up. that did this? 
No, there's a small team. Oh, it's okay. actually, I think the same team that did Crash for maybe Abor's Odyssey. They did some contracting this work. This wasn't with like some... a what Meat Boy type thing where it was just a two team no, 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 no. This is still. It sounds, it, it sounds amazing. It's is, out already. It is out currently on PC and Switch. Eventually, oh. it will be on PlayStation Four <laughs> and probably Xbox Two. But currently, it's on PC and Switch. And it sounds amazing. It is. Actually amazing. The first time I so saw it's not it, out yet. No, it is out. It is oh, okay. out. It came out right before this episode. Just not on certain platforms. Just not on yeah. certain platforms. But you can download this on the Switch right now or on PC, and it is fantastic. It is one of the most fun I've had with an indie game. And again, I'm kind of biased because I like old school platformers. Like we've been talking about mm -hmm. old IP and things like that. Nostalgia gets me, and this is totally dipping to the nostalgia bucket. But what makes it great is it's actually legitimately a good, innovative type game. So. Those are my five indie games that you should definitely play. Well, I can't cool. wait for Minico's Night Market. What is Minico's Night Market? I know what it is, but go ahead. It's Animal Crossing with cats. <laughs> That's exactly right. It looks like a lot of fun too. <laughs> <laughs> I'll buy any games with cats. So there's plenty of classic indie games to play, like Overcooked and Undertale and Shovel Knight that you can now play on the Switch. And then there's things we talked about today. So what are your favorite indie games that are coming out, coming soon, that you've been playing that other people have missed? Let us know in the comments below. Please like, subscribe, and share. I'm gonna get back to playing The Messenger. It says Nintendo. No. You haven't had a Nintendo rub off in a while. <laughs> Most of these Nintendo indie games are on over platforms, but some of the older stuff- a sub-series. <laughs> 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 oh. You all are terrible, and that was recording. Dang on it, yeah. anyway. <laughs> <laughs> she made a boo boo. Yeah. <laughs>